the forehead of your robot. Do you think those Slendy Tubbies episodes were insanely messed up? Well here's one that is a lot more insane than you can think of. My older brother, sister and I had gone to the cinemas to see DreamWorks The Bad Guys. I found it to be an insanely wonderful movie to be exact. After we left the theater as the movie ended, we got home except for my older brother, who is going back to his apartment farther from our house. As we got inside our house, I went into the attic to find some interesting stuff, until I noticed a Teletubbies DVD lying on the floor. I picked up the DVD and examined it. The DVD was called, The Grand Old Duke of York, and other stories. The cover consisted of the Teletubbies cast standing in front of some kind of house that didn't seem like it came from that episode, The Grand Old Duke of York. The strange house was in the middle of a cornfield-like field with grass for the lawn and with a rainbow up in the sky. The house looks oddly familiar, I never knew I have been there before. I shrugged it off and looked at the four episodes on the back cover. The series of episodes were, The Grand Old Duke of York, Playing in the Rain, Making Flowers, and Liminal Spaces. I found the fourth episode on the DVD strange, because most people had never heard of a Teletubbies episode called Liminal Spaces, or might have been. Shrugging off again, I went into my bedroom, turned my TV and PlayStation 4 on, inserted the disc into my PlayStation 4, and sat down in my chair. After some commercials and promos on the DVD, it then went to the menu. However the menu is rather strange, it depicted the front door of the Teletubbies house with Poe's scooter in front of it, lacking the Teletubbies in the image. The menu options were, play, episode selection, subtitles, and BBC weblink. I played all the episodes and concentrated. The three episodes were good, but the last one left me unsettled greatly. Before the episode started, a warning came up which read, this episode of Teletubbies was the first and only project made by Logan Undergrowth, before he was fired in 1999. It may contain some content that may not be suitable for younger audiences. Please watch at your own risk. Oh God. I whispered. After the warning, the episode started with the normal theme song. After the theme song, the voice trumpet rose and finally said the usual where have the Teletubbies gone, thinking that it was a very normal episode. The episode then cut to a field of Teletubby land. Tinky Winky, holding his red purse, appeared in the shot and said, uh, Oh! One day, in Teletubby land, Tinky Winky is slightly confused about what he'll find. The narrator spoke. Tinky Winky confused. Tinky Winky said, as I was a bit confused myself. The scene is nothing special or important, it's just the confused Tinky Winky trying to find something remotely interesting, but nothing came of it. This boring scene lasted about two minutes until suddenly, the magic windmill span. Uh, oh! Tinky Winky spoke, as he ran towards the three tubbies preparing for a TV event. Dipsy was chosen for the TV event, and this said event however doesn't feature children and adults getting together or any of the sorts. Instead it featured what looked to be a cameraman exploring an eccentric and endless maze of a hallway. I think I recognized that place before, as it is just a never-ending series of rooms devoid of objects and life. Unlike the first segment of the episode, it's nothing special. It's just three minutes of the exploration until it got to the end. When the event was near its end, the cameraman looked at a strange, tall, black void of a humanoid roaming in the endless maze of rooms. Suddenly, the creature notices the cameraman until the former began to attack the latter. The cameraman then fled from the creature until it finally kills him as the video ended. The Teletubbies were petrified and confused, and the event played once again. Then the second segment started with the narrator saying, One day, in Teletubby land, Tinky Winky tried to find anything good, but nothing came of it. The scene is just like the first segment, until it got to a shot of the same mysterious house that was depicted on the DVD cover. I knew that this episode is about to get even stranger so far. Tinky Winky came into the shot and spotted the house, saying, What's that? That's a house. The narrator replied. Where Tinky Winky go in? Tinky Winky asked. Why not ask your friends? 
They might come with you to the house. The narrator replied. Okay. Tinky Winky agreed, as he ran to his friends and talked about the house. Then Tinky Winky came back to the house with his friends and said. Tinky Winky sell house. Dipsy, Lala, and Go looked at the weird house in awe and said. Wow. Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Go go to house? Tinky Winky asked his friends. Yeah. Dipsy, Lala, and Go agreed, as they and Tinky Winky entered the house and began to examine it. The episode showed a shot of the interior of the house, showing a staircase with three doors in the place. The two doors were open, leading to somewhere else on the left side, and even the kitchen on the right side. Tinky Winky entered the shot, but he gasped in shock as he noticed that his friends had unknowingly disappeared, leaving him alone. Uh, oh! Tinky Winky explained. Oh no, all of your friends are gone. The narrator said, in a concerned tone. Tinky Winky scared. Tinky Winky spoke in a monotone before he went up the staircase. Then out of the blue, it cut to a shot of an empty cinema hallway. I knew it barely looked like the same hallway I'd been there before, when my brother, sister and I got to see DreamWorks' new movie The Bad Guys, as I mentioned earlier. However the cinema was taken place in the 90s, and vaguely displayed posters of obscure movies that were never released in reality. Tinky Winky walked into the shot and confusingly asked, What's this place? You were at a movie theater. The narrator answered. Tinky Winky noticed that his purse went missing during the scene, shocking him. I knew that this episode is going to be a fever dream for a baby show. I said confusedly. Tinky Winky continues roaming in various liminal and dreamlike elements such as a school, office building, supermarket, restaurant, circus, and so on, each of them becoming more mysterious and uncanny. He then stumbled upon a kid's bedroom, done in the early CG animation style that was used for the show. What's happening? Tinky Winky explained worriedly. The narrator did not say anything to Tinky Winky, which is starting to become more bizarre. Tinky Winky then walked towards another door, probably the closet that was in the CGI bedroom. He opens it and goes inside. As Tinky Winky got inside the closet, he realized he was surrounded by an endless black void, accompanied by an unnerving ambience that was done on a vintage synthesizer, reminiscent of something out of an 80s horror movie. I know this had to be some kind of joke, but it all went downhill as the episode continued. It looked too real to be a YouTube poop being burned onto a disc, and I realized I wasn't dreaming. After 10 seconds, Tinky Winky was consumed by the darkness, leaving the screen black for 3 seconds until the next scene started. Later as the ambience stopped, it cuts to the same endless maze-like hallway that was shown in the TV event, except it was done in the same CGI style as the bedroom, but darker. Faint buzzing was heard throughout the place. Tinky Winky reappeared in the shot, still usually looking live action around the CGI environment. What's this place? Tinky Winky asked. Then the narrator came back and answered. It's the back rooms. Tinky Winky need to escape back rooms. Tinky Winky said frantically. He then roams around the back rooms, trying to find an exit to escape his nightmare, but no luck came. The scene of Tinky Winky roaming around goes on and on until something shocking happened. He noticed a sound of inhuman footsteps coming from the other rooms, but he shrugged it off and continues to roam around for an exit. Then he noticed the same void-like humanoid monster that attacked the cameraman in the TV event, but it too was animated in CGI. The creature noticed Tinky Winky as the latter gasped in fear and runs away from it. As Tinky Winky ran away, the creature chases after him as the environment of the back rooms started to get darker and scarier, making the chase scene intense. Everything starts to turn red as the creature continued running after Tinky Winky. Suddenly Tinky Winky annoyingly fell over and was unable to get up, which soon leads to his demise by the creature. He noticed that he was at a dead end. I swear it just got worse, as it showed a point of view of Tinky Winky getting approached by the creature. It let out a deafeningly loud satanic roar as the TV started to vibrate violently from the noise. Tinky Winky, still in his point of view, gets struck by the creature as the screen cut to black, followed by the sound of Tinky Winky screaming realistically in agony and flash ripping. 
It stayed black for about 5 seconds until the sound stopped. It then showed a shot of a field of Teletubby land. The voice trumpet then rose, and didn't even say the usual time for Tubby Bye Bye three times. Instead it said, Nostalgia is just a game playing in your head. Everything you have remembered should seem to fade away. The outro started normally, except lacking the Teletubbies and even the narrator, which makes it more disquieting. Strangely, the Sun Baby had no face on it, which is only just the Sun, lacking any emotion. Melancholy and somber music was heard playing throughout the ending credits. After the credits, it showed the Ragdoll and BBC logos, except it was in black and white, and the smiley face on the former was frowning. When the 1997 BBC closing logo played, it was also in black and white and slowed down, along with the audio's pitch. I was horrified and distraught after watching it. The way the episode played out was disturbing and downhearted, making me question my reality. I then told my mother about the strange DVD. When I replayed the episode with my mother, she was stunned. I took screenshots of the episode before my mother gave the DVD to Ragdoll and BBC. I believe that Logan Undergrowth only made this surreal episode, but not the last ones that featured Slendy Tubbies. To be honest, I think the Slendy Tubbies episodes were only just six booths put onto innocent VHS tapes by an unnamed troll, who was obsessed with the well-known horror parody game series that was made to ruin childhoods. I had a nightmare about being in the same situation as Tinky Winky, exploring liminal places after liminal places, roaming in the back rooms, and getting killed by the shadowy humanoid creature. To relieve the horror of a Teletubbies episode in my head, I kept thinking about the characters from the bad guys. If you ever find an innocent DVD or VHS tape of a kid's show with disturbing episodes made by sadistic people that got fired, brace yourself, or discard them if sensitive.